live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. It's time for... Come on! Nice 4th of July weekend. I know I did. Look, look, I went out to the suburbs, to some grown people's house, right? And it was all okay, because I had already eaten lamb chops for breakfast, so I went kind of full. And then when I got there, so everyone's drinking and having a good time and stuff, and all of a sudden, it's time to light the grill. Well, the wife, thought the husband bought the coals. <laughs> he thought she bought the coals. They're entertaining grown people like we're all the same age. But everyone was too dr drunk, <laughs> those two, to go to the store to get the coals. Well, I was planning on leaving at six anyway, so it didn't really much matter to me. I couldn't stay for the fireworks because I knew we were working today, which I love working on a holiday because I know a lot of people are on the road, but a lot of people are still in the house. So, how you doing, house people? Yeah. I got in the elevator in my building this morning and I forgot that it was, um, you know, a lot of people aren't working on the 5th. The 5th? Yeah. I guess because it was, um, it's a Monday. After, you know, the holiday was a weekend, so they give you the Monday off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, the paparazzi was still out. Perfect. <laughs> Only one guy, though. Yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't take their time off. Right. Then I know Jerry O is here. He's in the studio, Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm out at I can only call it a mob dinner. There's this place in Manhattan called Rayos. Oh my goodness. On 114? Yes. But Legendary. you can't get in unless you're a member. I've never been there. Okay, uh -huh. and you never will unless you're invited. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> First of all, everyone in there watches our show. Perfect. And they let it go subtly and I was so flattered. And the food was so good. By the way, that's where I got the lamb chops. The food was so good. And they just kept bringing food. You didn't even have to say a word, just all of a sudden. And shout out to the, the people in the kitchen. Everyone was so nice. They went out to my driver, bought him food. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Look, that. I get there, right? There's a guy at the door who was sitting at our table, right next to me, actually. Um, I get to the door when I arrive. He, he's like, Wendy! I'm like, huh? <laughs> so I'm like, okay. The double kiss. You look beautiful! I'm like, thank you. So he moves along, he helps me down. And then um, another one at our table on my other side, right? Goes, don't worry, Wendy, you're protected. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Shows the burner. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then, out of nowhere, start spreading the news. 
Yes. And the whole place and me are singing New York, New York. Wow. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like making new friends. So, um, that track and field star who won't be competing in the Olympics after she smoked weed, I'm very, very, very disappointed in Shakari Richardson and there's no excuse for what you did. Well, she said she smoked the weed to cope with her mother's death. Well, you yeah, know what? The Olympics were supposed to be your big come up and out of wherever you're from. Sponsors and all that money and all that. And now people are looking at you. Okay. Do you think it's okay that she smoked weed? No, no clap if you do. Okay. Okay. Well, weed is on the list of many things, including steroids and stuff for the Olympics. And even though weed is legal in most places now, it shouldn't be legal in the Olympics. Call me corny, you've called me worse. But no, and it's on the list and she knew that. They might bring her back for what the? I think the relay race. Right. Yeah, she has a chance to still compete in the relay race, but I don't know if that's even gonna happen. But the relay is with a bunch of girls, whereas what she was going for is a solo thing and her chance to make good. Well, you've made bad. Oh well. A date who also is for visibly firmer skin that improves over time. Olay Body, fearless in my skin. On another note, I don't like that the Olympics rejected the application for swim caps for, I'm not gonna even call this black women. I'm just gonna call this women in general. Because, you know, what they're saying is that they don't follow the natural form of a head. Now Olympics, low key, I think this is their way of keeping black girls out of swimming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. High key, I think that whoever makes this, this um, swim cap, the application was late. So the Olympics was in their right to reject the cap, but low key, you know, they were probably like, yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we don't have to, you know, make an excuse. The application was late. Yeah. Keep swimming, girls. Keep swimming. I got home last night and fell in the bed. I was so hungry, you know, cause there was no burgers, hot dog, nothing. But I fell in bed cause I knew I had to be here this morning. It's, and I had the TV on. Exactly nine o'clock on the dot. Cause I hear the fireworks. Like if I went to my observatory deck, I could see this, Macy's fireworks. They look really good. Yeah. <laughs> But I wasn't going up there. Yeah. Let me get in the bed. Right. Right. So all of a sudden at nine o'clock on the dot. Now I see Jersey from my apartment. Jersey was lit. Like all the fireworks. Apparently they were approved because they were so large. It wasn't like some illegal thing. Uh -huh, right. I showed you the picture. Uh-huh. I was laying in the bed. Yeah. The girls were in the window. <laughs> they weren't frightened at all. They were like, oh, wow, oh. They ended at 9.30, right? But all I see is smoke, you know, over Jersey. Yeah. And I said, where's that smoke going? <laughs> now my windows weren't open, but all I see is smoke. In about five minutes, my whole apartment smelled like smoke to the point that I think it's still in my nose. <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. Yeah. Uh-huh.
Nice full audience. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> for those of you out of town, you should know that a woman was slashed in the face on 20th Street right here in Chelsea. Just saying. The face. No, it was a low crime weekend though. Oh. Oh well, I know. Angelina Jolie, who's 41, and The Weeknd, who's 31, uh, were seen out having dinner at a celebrity hotspot. Now, first of all, if you're gonna make reservations for a celebrity hotspot, you wanna be seen, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were there for hours. They left the restaurant separately. And what do I think is going on? They probably hooked up and, but I don't see him falling in love with her, nor her him. I don't see them as a couple. But what I do see is he's getting into acting more. And he's probably, because now she's a director and of course an actress and, you know, she might have some uh, good words for him. And so that's what I think that they were actually doing, aside from hooking up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think this, this is good gossip for both of them. You know, it makes her seem, I don't know, but it makes him seem, you know, wow, cause she's still A-list. So, yeah. Karuchi Tran is trying to shut down the rumors that she's back with Chris Brown. And by the way, I don't think that they're together. I think she's smarter than that. You know, we like Chris, but Chris is still working through issues. Karuchi is climbing her way through Hollywood to get to where she wants to be. Uh, but they were spotted at three different events, uh, a fashion show on June 23rd, Six Flags on June 29th. But this was to celebrate that movie, um, Space Jam? Space Jam. Yeah, so everyone was there. That's not unusual. Karuchi posted, there was an event at Six Flags for Space Jam. There were a ton of other people there. Next. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the third time they were spotted together was at Tiana Taylor's uh, event. Well, they're both friends with her. Why wouldn't they be there? They weren't together. Oh, Karuchi, I believe you. I know you're smarter than that. <clears throat> it gives me great pleasure to present the next story. <laughs> Chet Hayes, okay has reportedly been cut off by his parents. First of all, they should have done it a long time ago. Well, Chet has an ex-girlfriend. Her name is Kiana. <laughs> With the baby hair. And Kiana spoke to Radar Online. She said Chet was uh, cut off uh, because he started drinking and smoking again. And it began during the pandemic and he's still doing it. And the parents have had it up to here, so they cut him off financially. Clap if you think this is wrong of the parents. Oh. <laughs> I think part of Tom and Rita's problem is, is that, you know, they've probably looked at Chet as you know, just take this and figure out life. You know, like a throwaway kid. And so he's been so used to just getting the money anyway. In the meantime, Kiana also said that Tom and Rita are far from perfect. Uh, she alleges 
Well, she, she alleged, uh, she has texts uh, between them. I watched my mom control my dad for my entire life. He just sat there and took it. I believe it. I believe it. They say Rita's really mean behind the scenes. No, does that mean mean or running her family? Sometimes husbands don't know how and somebody's got to be the boss. You certainly wouldn't think that though, right? No. <laughs> they seem so sweet. Both of them seem really sweet. I know. Mm. So the question is, will this ruin their image? No. Because until we see it, it's just Hot Topics and Chet and Kiana talking. <laughs> Look at this. No, this is not gonna ruin their image. He's got three Oscars. And she's lovely. And Chet, get your life together. <laughs> at the table at Rayos, right? So Mikey, who's sitting right next to me, uh, he goes, I thought you wore wigs. <laughs> no, everyone in there's loud. You know, which was fine with me, because when I get off TV, I don't want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting, squeezing and eating. He said, I thought you wore wigs. I said, I do, this is a wig. He said, no it ain't. <laughs> I said, it looks like it's growing from your scalp. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Just such funniness. And it was mostly men in there. There might have been eight women in the whole place. All men, you know, old school men. They like their women either to stay home or sit down and shut up. Right. Different culture. Mm -hmm. And I was there for it. Yeah. <laughs> so Kelly Clarkson wants a judge to declare her legally single from her husband, Brandon Blackstock. Now, they filed for divorce in June of 2020. I don't know what legally single means. I mean, once you serve him, you know, we're, we're, I'm filing for divorce, all bets are off. I think I had a date that night. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I have zero, I, like I feel like if you file for a divorce, then you're automatically legally single. I don't understand the story at all. I don't understand what the difference is. I don't know. Is she Catholic? Is th that a Catholic thing? They got yeah. two kids, six and four, and she's got the kids. Right, she has uh, primary custody. Mm. Who is he? Brandon Black, he uh, was the son of her former manager and then he became her manager. Also, I think his uh, stepmother is Reba McIntyre. Oh. Former stepmother, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, good luck, Kelly. Good luck. Um. Elizabeth Hurley is furious that her son, who looks like her twin, mm -hmm, <laughs> he models and stuff. Anyway, that he won't be getting his $200 million inheritance. Oh. Well, Liz had a son with a man named Damien. And Damien was a billionaire. This is 19 years ago. Uh, a few years ago, Damien, or, um, yeah, Damien. Yeah, Damien's the son, and the, his father was named Steve. Steve Bing. Mm -hmm. Okay. A few years ago, Mr. Bing committed suicide. Which, by the way, 
um, according to statistics, because I'm looking and watching TV and seeing stuff, it's very sad. You know, when people commit suicide, that makes their children 500 times more likely to want to commit suicide eventually. Anyway, before he died, uh, Mr. Bing fought with the court um, and his dad then pick, pick, uh, picked up the fight after he killed himself. And so his dad won, saying that, you know what? This child was born out of wedlock, so he deserves nothing. Can you believe that? I mean, he has the right to do whatever he wanted to do with his money before he killed himself, but doesn't make it right.